Hello there, my friendly guardsmen, and welcome to the fifth and final part of my miniseries covering the Cadian regiments. Since last time we talked about famous infantry regiments of Cadia and their exploits across the Imperium, obviously today I wanted to conclude this by talking about the armored regiments and a few famous Cadian officers and commanders. I am your usual host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us hear more tales about these fellows, shall we? The Sixth Cadian Armored This unit was deployed on the ice world of Betalis Free at the end of the 41st millennium, where it aided Imperial forces in successfully repelling an attack by the Eldar craft world Mimira. The Ninth Cadian Armored and the 142nd Cadian Armored these regiments fought in the valiant defense of their homeworld during the 13th Black Crusade. The 17th Cadian Armored When the treacherous forces of the 15th Akanan Infantry Regiment declared its allegiance to the ruinous powers, it had little in the way of either heavy armor or artillery support. This way, they were unable to compete against the combined arms forces of the 17th Cadian Armored and the 110th Elysian Drop Troop Regiments sent to eliminate them. The 23rd Cadian Armored This unit is known to possess at least one Bane Sword super heavy tank known as Tyron's Doom. The 24th Cadian Armored, the Emperor's Hammer. This unit took part in the valiant defense of Kassar Gear on their homeworld of Cadia during the 13th Black Crusade. Constituting nine companies, they were commanded by Colonel Polsky. Each company was primarily composed of standard Lehman Ross battle tanks of the Mars pattern and many of its variants. By the time Kassar Gear fell, the 24th Cadian Armored had been reduced to only three companies comprised of 30 Lehman Ross battle tanks, one heavy company which possessed a Baneblade super heavy tank, and a command company which possessed Polsky's Lehman Ross command tank and Chimera. The severe losses the regiment suffered is a testimony of the intense fighting the 24th Cadian valiantly saw while standing against the forces of chaos. The 31st Cadian Armored this unit took part in the Imperial Campaign on Levelnor 4. The 71st Cadian Armored, the Hellhounds. Commanded by Colonel Anders, this unit deployed to fight against the Tau on Bactar Frey. The 81st Cadian Armored, the Rolling Thunder. This is a distinguished Imperial Guard regiment that fought as part of the 18th Army Group Exelon. During Operation Thunderstorm, over 90% of the regiment's tanks were lost while fighting against the Orcs on the world of Golgotha. The 88th Cadian Armored This regiment is a Cadian mechanized infantry unit that saw action against plague zombies and the warband of the Death Guard Traitor Legion on the shrine world of Cather. The 89th Cadian Armored these guys are known to possess the famed Baneblade tank, Steel Lord. The 98th Cadian Armored This regiment took part in the Imperial intervention in the infamous Luxor Uprising at the end of the 41st millennium. They fought alongside the Nova Marines chapter of Astartes in putting down the rebellion of the world's workers that rose up against the cruel ruling oligarchs. Their uprising was backed by the nefarious Chaos Space Marines of the Alpha Legion, always eager to stir up an insidious rebellion against the Emperor's rule. The planet proved to be a linchpin of the Departamento Munitorum dominated Helioret sector, which was vital to the wider supply of war materials to the northern Ultima Segmentum, which was why the rebellion had to be put down quickly. The 113th Cadian Armored this regiment was another Cadian mechanized infantry unit stationed in the Cadian Gate. It contained Griffon 4 pattern chimeras that were outfitted with heavy bolters. The 114th Cadian Armored, Blood and Thunder. This regiment is commanded by one of Cadia's premier tank aces, Colonel Snake Stransky. 
renowned for his particular use of aggressive armored attacks and counterattacks, the 114th earned the nickname Blood and Thunder. At the end of the 41st millennium, this unit was assigned to the 4621st Imperial Army, 11th Corps, during the Taurus Campaign, which, unfortunately, ended in failure for the Imperial forces. During the campaign, the Blood and Thunder was assigned to break through enemy lines to assist the beleaguered 23rd Elysian Drop Troop Regiment during Operation Comet. But the mission ended in failure, for when the armored unit arrived at the Elysian's position, they had already been wiped out to a man. Colonel Stransky ordered a tactical withdrawal, in which the regiment withdrew in good order. But during that withdrawal, they were forced to abandon the majority of their Chimera transports, and march the rest of the way to their designated evacuation point on foot. And now, for some soldiers and commanders of these famous regiments. Lord Castellan Ursacar E. Creed Lord Castellan Creed is the supreme commander of all Imperial forces assigned to Cadia and also served as Imperial Commander and Imperial Planetary Governor of that crucial fortress world. Creed is known to be a tactical genius, who has wrested victory from defeat many times over. Though he initially came from humble beginnings, Creed eventually rose meteorically through the ranks, eventually becoming the Supreme Commander of all of Cadia's military forces, and the Colonel of the famed 8th Cadian, the Lord Castellan's own. Lord General Mohamar Antoninus de Vere Lord General de Vere was the supreme commander of the 18th Army Group Exelon during its mission to the orc-held world of Golgotha. This mission was designated as Operation Thunderstorm, an expeditio reclamatus to find and retrieve the wreckage of Commissar Yarek's personal bane blade, named the Fortress of Arrogance. This imperial operation was undertaken sometime at the end of the 41st millennium, before the Third War for Armageddon began. Commissar Yarek and the Departamento Munitorum believed that this tank would be a huge boost to morale, for the imperial forces defending Armageddon from the predations of Wa Gaskul. General de Vere would succeed in his objective, but would sadly not survive it, as in his haste to address and compliment the men from the top of the just-reclaimed Fortress of Arrogance, he was cut in half by a slash of the dying warboss's power claw. Major General Gerard Bergen This guy served as part of the 18th Army Group Exelon during Operation Thunderstorm. Colonel Darrow Arcot Arcot is a 30-year veteran of the Interior Guard, who was assigned to lead the newly raised 99th Cadian Mechanized Infantry Regiment. Subsequently, Arcot worked tirelessly to prepare this newly raised regiment for warfare, and, thankfully, that appears to have paid off. Warden Colonel Parmenian Fade Fade was one of the senior commanders of the 88th Cadian Armored Regiment, that assisted the reclamation of the imperial world of Cather. Fade commanded part of the spearhead of imperial forces assigned to retake the planet from the forces of chaos during the 13th Black Crusade. Knight Commander Pask Knight Commander Pask is considered one of the imperial gods' most renowned tank aces a hero of the Imperium of Man, and a constant presence within the armored regiments of the Cadian shock troops, Pask is one of the most skilled tank commanders ever to grace a Lehman Russ tank. He has commanded these machines through hundreds of campaigns, with his reputation continuing to grow with each victory. Over the decades, Pask has commanded all variants of the Lehman Russ, and has mastered all of them. He knows the capabilities and the limits of each and every weapon system these mighty war machines can mount, and it is a brave fool indeed that strays into his gun sights. Second Lieutenant Mira Lieutenant Mira assumed overall command of the 203rd Cadian Regiment, after all its senior officers were killed during the fighting on the Forge World of Graia against Wa Grimskull. Color Sergeant Jaron Kell Kell was the Lord Castellan Creed's personal confidant and man-at-arms, 
and the bearer of the regimental standard of the 8th Cadian Regiment. Sergeant Lucas Baston Baston was one of the most highly regarded and capable non-commissioned officers within the ranks of the Cadian shock troop regiments of the Imperial Guard. Guardsman Draskez While serving in the 91st Cadian Regiment, Guardsman Draskez decimated an entire gene stealer brood that had infiltrated the rear echelons of the regiment's command platoon. He accomplished this feat by lifting the entire bipod arrangement off an autocannon and marching towards the hideous Xenos as he fired. Though later killed in battle, Draskes was awarded the esteemed Honorifica Imperialis for his actions. Lastly, before I conclude this, I wanted to give you a couple of reading recommendations featuring the Cadians themselves. Now, one note I should make here is that there are a lot of both Imperial Guard and Cadian short stories available on the Black Library. There's also several anthologies of the Imperial Guard which feature a couple of Cadian short stories too. However, I just wanted to recommend you a couple of things that put the Cadians front and center for you. And by that, I'm referring to the older Imperial Guard novel titled Cadian Blood, written by Aaron Dembski Bowden. This is in fact his very first Black Library novel. In this story, we have a regiment of Cadians fighting against the victims of a Nurgle plague on an Imperial Shrine world. Pretty much a zombie apocalypse novel in the 40k setting. The second recommendation I had is actually an audio drama titled Iron Devil, written by C.L. Werner. In this story, we have another Cadian unit, on a desert planet this time, fighting an orc monstrosity called a Morkonaut. Both of these are available on the Black Library website, and no, I am not endorsed by them. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the famous Cadian units for today. For those of you curious what Imperial Guard regiments I'll cover next, It'll either be the Valhallan Ice Warriors, which I'll probably only do about three videos on, since there isn't a lot of lore on them, or the Katakan Jungle Fighters. So, stay tuned for those. Was this video enjoyable or informative for you? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content. If you'd like to help me keep this channel afloat, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.